All right, so this section is about combinations. That's all we're doing today. And <clears throat> what I want to do is first do a brief review on the two previous sections. Number one was the fundamental counting principle, and that says that you need to know the options you have, and then you multiply them together to figure out your total number of options. The second one was permutations, right? And that had the characteristics of order mattering, right? You had no replacement. Um, you could even say that there was, and this is tied with order, ranking, a ranking component. All right, so you weren't gonna use things twice. The order mattered, there was a ranking component. Remember and recall that the permutations formula was NPR, and that was N factorial over N minus R factorial. Okay? So that's what we did in our homework. The third one is what we're doing today, which is combinations. And you're gonna see that it looks very, very similar to permutations with just a slight little twist where the order doesn't matter. So the order of items does not matter, order no matter, okay? And so that's the really, really big thing. And in a moment, we're gonna see the formula for NCR, okay? Does that make sense, everybody? So we're gonna see that in just a moment and how to deal with a situation where you're taking N items or you have N items, and you're taking R things from it at a time where the order does not matter. And what we're gonna see at the very end of the section is you're gonna have to be able to distinguish between the two and pick, am I gonna use NPR or am I gonna use NCR? Okay, all right, so here we go. Problem number one, determine whether the following problem involves a permutation or a combination. Well, we're right into it, aren't we? Let's take a look. We don't have to solve it. A medical researcher needs 16 people to test the effectiveness of an experimental drug. If 55 people have volunteered for the test, in how many ways can the 16 people be selected? What do you guys think? Combination. Combination. Let's take a look. And it's correct. Now the question is, why was this problem a combination? Because the 16 people, there wasn't a specific order that they had to be in. Does that make sense? You just needed to take 16 people at a time. We weren't ranking them. We weren't doing it, say, by age. We weren't putting them into a category for the healthiest people, then the next healthiest people, and so on. It was just 16 people. So in this problem, it would have been 55 C16. It would not have been 55 P16 because in this problem, the order did not matter. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, so there you go. There's your first situation where you have to determine. Let's take a look at this one. Determine whether the following problem involves a permutation or a combination. How many different two-letter passwords can be formed from the letters O, P, Q, R, S, T, and U if no repetition of letters is allowed? Permutation, key word, no. no repetition, key phrase. The key phrase here is that maybe you didn't get it, didn't get it, didn't get it, didn't get it, boom, right there, no repetition, you know you're dealing with an NPR. Does that make sense? Okay, very good. Now, let's take a look at this one. What is the formula? Well, what I wanna do is I wanna show you this. You're gonna get this formula on your test, by the way. So I wanna show you here that 10C3, and, and they say a combination is a group of items taken without regard to their order. The notation for a combination is NCR and can be evaluated as follows. And that's the NCR formula. What is the difference between these two? Just an extra R factorial, right? 
So your formula is n factorial over n minus r factorial, and the only difference between these two, an extra multiplied by r factorial in the denominator. Does that make sense? And I'm going to show you how to work this. Now, you already actually know how to work this if you did the very last one or two problems on your homework. Those were a little bit tricky. I left them for you. Hopefully you figured them out. Well, if you went through Help Me Solve This, it wasn't a big deal. So um, let's take a look at this. 11C3. So I'm going to do that problem over here. That way you can see how it applies to the formula or the formula applies to the problem. So let's take a look at the setup. 11 factorial, your n. 11 minus 3 factorial. 3 factorial. Everybody see how that was done? Okay. Now, let's keep going. If this was your homework from yesterday or the class before, you would have done 11 factorial over 8 factorial, and then we would just add the 3 factorial. You would know that you need to subtract these two. Okay. Now, this is where things change just a bit. If you didn't do the last two questions on your homework, um, you wouldn't quite know how to do this, but that's okay. I'm going to show you now. Here we go. So what you're going to do here is recall the shortcut that I taught you. What was the shortcut? <clears throat> Look at the smallest of the two numbers. Or sorry, the biggest of the two numbers, I apologize. Look at the biggest of the two numbers. That's what you're going to apply the shortcut to. Let's take a look here. What do I mean by that? 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 factorial, 8 factorial, 3 factorial, I know that those can cancel down. Does that make sense? Think about it. If this was our permutation section, just recall, if this was our permutation section, you would do 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 all the way down to 1. And the bottom, if it was just that, would be 8 times 7 times 6 all the way down to 1. You could cancel everything down to 1, and your answer would be 11 times 10 times 9. Does that make sense? Right? You did that all in your homework, right? Now, instead of me just writing that out, I write it 8 factorial. Isn't that true, though? 8 factorial is 8 times 7 times 6 all the way down to 1, and so is this one. And ultimately, what do I have? 11 times 10 times 9 over the eight, everything from 8 down goes away, and 3 times 2 times 1, whatever the difference, the quotient of those two is, that's your answer. So let's just recap real quick. So you'd rather just type in that in the question? So 11 factorial over 8 factorial 3? So what you're doing here is I'm just showing you how to calculate it. What did I do? I cut out the overlap. So I looked at it like it was last section, and the only difference is that I cut out down to my biggest number on the bottom, and then I just do the rest of it. Does that make sense? So would it be wrong if I typed in that first thing? The 11 factorial, yeah. Yeah, you can if your calculator can handle it. Okay. But most people, when the numbers get big enough, it's not gonna work out nicely. So you're going to, and maybe you're not sharp at this yet, I wouldn't blame you. Once you get used to it, it'll be no problem. We'll have many problems. So what's the answer here? Anybody got the answer? 165. 165, okay. So you would do 11 times 10 times 9, get the answer, divided by 3 times 2 times 1, and that should be 165. Now if you do it 11 factorial divided by 8 factorial times 3 factorial, it doesn't give you the same answer. It's not the same answer. It gives you like a 5. It wouldn't be the same answer because 3 factorial is on the bottom. And if you do 11 factorial divided by 8 factorial and then multiply, it's like putting the 3 factorial on top. If anything, you should take 11 factorial divided by 8 factorial mm -hmm. divided by 3 factorial. Oh, okay. That would get you the right answer. Okay. All right, let's move on and let's get more practice. Remember, we're on problem number four. Got it. You got it. Good. Got okay, so let's take a look at this next one. 19C1. That's going to be what? Yeah, and so let's just double check that. 19 factorial over 19 minus 1 factorial. 1 factorial. Everybody agree? Right? 
And so I just want to, I know that you guys know that anything with a one, you're gonna be back to it, but I just want to bring you back to our problem so you can get more practice with it. 19 factorial over 18 factorial, one factorial. That's the setup, then what? I would do 19 times 18 factorial, 18 factorial, one factorial, the 18's cancel, and sure enough, it is indeed 19. I want you to get used to doing that. Does that make sense as your shortcut? All right, so let's go do another problem. It is 19, I'm not gonna type it in. All right, how about this one? Let's take a look. All right, let's see here, 9C9, maybe it's one. Let's go set it up, nine factorial over nine minus nine factorial, nine factorial, everybody agree? There's your N, there's your R, N factorial, N minus R factorial, R factorial. With me so far? Okay, so this is gonna be nine factorial over zero factorial, nine factorial. We all know from our study from permutations that zero factorial is one, right? So this would be nine factorial over one times nine factorial, well, wait a second, can we cancel these? Yes, that can, that's gonna become one. So that's one over one, which is one. Notice, very similar patterns going on. Okay, so it's one. And you know, if you wanna remember, anytime n and r are the same, it's gonna be one, okay? Let's keep going. All right, let's take a look at this one. No tricks here. Just a standard problem, 30C2. Let's go set it up. N, 30 factorial. N minus R, 30 minus two factorial. R factorial, there it is, there's your setup, right? So now, this is 30 factorial over 28 factorial, two factorial. What do we cancel? Come back, what do we cancel? 20 down, 28 factorial. So this should be 30 times 29 times 28 factorial over 28 factorial, two factorial. I cancel these. Remember, you wanna cancel down to get rid of the biggest part, right? So now, this is 30 times 29 over two times one. How did I get two times one? Two factorial. And so what is our answer? Somebody got it? Four thirty-five. Okay, thank you. And let's just type this one in just to make sure we're good to go. Four thirty-five, and we're good. Does that make sense, guys? Now, <coughs> this problem right here, no big deal. Let's go do it. It's just two in one. You're going to calculate nine C six and 4C3, whatever the result of those two are, whatever the result is, you'll divide those, that's it, okay? So let's go get some more practice, shall we? So let's have, let's have this side of the room calculate 9C6, okay? And let's have this side of the room calculate 4C3, shall we, okay? So half the room does 9C6, the other half does 4C3, the 4C3 is not so bad. Neither are bad, really. They're both very manageable. Now, I have a question for you, for those of you on this side of the room calculating 9C6. All this time, most of these problems, we've canceled the number in front. Do we just blindly cancel the number in front? No. no. Cancel the bigger, the larger number. Don't go down 9876543 so that you can cancel that, right? 
go nine, eight, seven, six, and cancel the sixes. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, so I wanna really point that out. Very easy to get stuck in the trap of, oh, I have to cancel that first number. No, the key here is with the shortcuts that we're using, we cancel the bigger of the two, the bigger of the two, the bigger of the two, the bigger of the two and down to the bigger of the two. And so this would be nine times eight times seven over three times two times one. Any, you guys over here got this, the numerator? 84? Okay, so there's the numerator. It becomes 84. The denominator is what, just? What do you guys get over there? Four. Four, exactly, so this is just four, four times three factorial. I mean, you don't really have to do it, but there it is, they cancel, and you have four over one, which is just four. Does that make sense, everybody? So this is four, and your answer is? 21. Does that make sense? Okay, so there it is, done. All right, now let's take a look at this next one. These are just calculations. Ultimately, when we get to our um, word problems, they're just these types of things over and over again. Okay, just like you saw with the permutation section, you had calculations, but then ultimately when you got to the word problems, they're pretty easy. Okay, let's take a look at this one, and, and then hopefully I think after this one we get to our word problems. What do we have to do? What are the parts of this problem? We're gonna need to calculate 20P2, we're gonna to have to divide that by two factorial. We're gonna to have to calculate 20C2, and then we're gonna to have to put it all together. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, so let's go do this. A little practice in, in permutations, right? So let's go do 20P2, right? Let's go do the 20P2. That's from last section, no big deal. And as you guys know is that in the combination section, again, I'm going to reiterate that you're going to see permutations as well. That's why they give this to you, because you're going to have to distinguish and differentiate problems that are permutation from combination. This is just a standard calculation. So this is what? 20 factorial over 20 minus 2 factorial, which is 20 factorial over 18 factorial. We learned our lesson. 20 times 19 times 18 factorial over 18 factorial, cancel those. That's 20 times 19, somebody got it? 380. 380, thank you. So what do we have here? This is 380 divided by, well, just two ultimately, isn't it? Because two factorial is two times one, which is just two. So we also have to calculate what? 20C2, don't we? We have to calculate 20C2. Let's go do that. How about we do it right over here? So 20C2, I hope you guys by now are comfortable with this. 20 factorial, 20 minus two factorial, two factorial. This is 20 factorial, 18 factorial, two factorial. So that's 20 times 19 times 18 factorial. 18 factorial, 2 factorial. I know I'm blowing through this, but I know you guys can handle it. Um, 18 factorials cancel. So that's 20 times 19 over 2 times 1. Somebody got an answer? Did I go through too fast? You're writing it faster than you can calculate. Yeah. I know if you guys had enough time, you could do it. It's 190. It's 190? Thanks. Thank you. So I know you guys could have done that. And so now we put all the pieces in. We know 20P2 is 380. We know 2 factorial is 2. We know 20C2 is 190. And what's 380 divided by 2? 190. 190. Minus 190, the answer is? Zero. Nothing wrong with getting a zero answer. Yeah, there is. That was a lot of work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, does that make sense, guys? Okay, I am not going to go do this next problem. Okay, you can see that it's just a matter of doing an 8C3 and 8C7, putting them together, and then this one, which actually is very easy. Okay, so I'm not gonna do that one, that's for you guys to do. 
And here we go. We get to our actual um, problem. So I'm going to erase this one because we have plenty of examples. Okay. So let's take a look. Is this still recording, Your Honor? Perfect. Thank you. An election ballot asks voters to select six city commissioners. Hold on, before I actually keep going. Before, when, before you start reading, be already set to look for keywords. All right? Okay, so already be set. Am I, is this a permutation where order matters, ranking, or is it combinations? Order doesn't matter. Always look for that. Because when you start a problem, you're always going to start it. Am I doing an NPR or am I doing an NCR? Okay? And the key words are going to help you differentiate between the two. Okay? And select the correct one. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Think an NPR or NCR. An election ballot asks voters to select six city commissioners from a group of 21 candidates. In how many ways can this be done? Does order matter here? No. no. So we're dealing with what? Combinations. Combinations. So what's our N here? Oh, I know. Six. Six. No, 21. It is 21. Because no, 21. remember that your N always has to be bigger than your R, right? You have a big group that you're taking things from in smaller groups. Does that make sense, guys? So your setup for this problem would be 21C6. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, 21C6. Let's go calculate that real quick. We're not going to do all of them, but I want to do some of them. That way, that way you guys um, are exposed to it. And I know we've already done, like as you can see, we've already done plenty of them, right? It's no different, right? So that's 21 factorial over 21 minus 6 factorial, 6 factorial, 21 factorial over what? Uh, 15 factorial, 6 factorial, so that's 21 times 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16 times 15 factorial over 15 factorial, 6 factorial, 15 factorials cancel. Uh, that's 21 times 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16 over 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. I know you guys could have done this, whatever. So, anybody got an answer? <laughs> and I'm going to tell you a shortcut in a moment. I thought that was the shortcut. No. There's a shortcut for a shortcut? There's a shortcut for a shortcut. But I needed to show you this. Because the bottom line is if I showed you the shortcut, it would be 54264. 54264. Test it out. Hey, there's a button on your calculator that does this. Yep. What? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, if you look at the probability area, it's the same in play There's that. NPR and NCR there on your calculator. <laughs> so, some So, what you'll do is typically you'll do 21. Hit your probability button or your whatever it is. Choose C or P, the NPR or NCR. Hit that and then put your R in afterwards and then hit equals. Let's go test that. So one more time, the way that you would do it in the calculator. All right. <laughs> Why would I tell you early on? You gotta learn all this, right? So you do typically your N, then you go hit your probability button, find choose either NPR and CR depending on the problem, hit that, then you'll just put in your R value, hit the equal sign, and it should dump out your answer. Does that make sense, guys? Yes? I don't know. Uh, it's in the, it should be in the same area as where yeah, you found your factorial. but I'll click on it, and then it like spits out the... Um, you might have to actually hit it and then put in the number. Yeah. I and then it yeah. combination. They put that in. So then maybe you have to put maybe your N, you do N comma the other one. You're gonna have to look that up. Okay. I don't know how to do it on that calculator. I would just have to research it myself. 
Okay. So just look it up, but you know where the button is. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this next one, shall we? Um, so now, you know how the easy way to do it. It's great. Um, you volunteer to help drive children at a charity event to the zoo, but you can fit only six of the 18 children present in your van. How many different groups of six children can you drive? PR or CR? CR. It's CR, because the order doesn't matter. So what would the setup be? 18, C, 6. I'm not gonna do it because now you really can do it on your own, okay? So the setup for this problem is 18, C, 6 because order doesn't matter, all right? Let's take a look at this one. To win at Lotto in one state, one must correctly select six numbers from a collection of 53 numbers, one through 53. The order in which the selection is made does not matter. How many different selections? So this is a C, obviously. 53, C, 6. Okay. You guys with me so far? Okay. Let's keep going. The nice thing is that they will tell you these. All right. In how many ways can a committee of four men and five women be formed from a group of 11 men and seven women? Okay. Stop for a moment because this is the first time we see two situations. Now, first and foremost, what is it? Combinations or permutations? Combinations. Combinations. The problem looks a little bit more complicated, and it is, but the bottom line is that first and foremost, decide whether you're dealing with permutations or combinations. We know we're dealing with combinations because the order does not matter. But what is this whole, a committee of four men and five women. Where does that come from? And from a group of 11 men and seven women. Okay, where is that? How do we apply that? Well, it's actually very easy. Do the men with the men and the women with the women. What do I mean by that? Four out of 11, 11 C4. What's the women gonna be? Seven C5. Then multiply them actually, okay? And that's your answer. Does that make sense, guys? So when you get to a problem, because this isn't the last problem that's gonna do this on, when you get to a problem that's like this where you're taking, where you have two groups of individuals or things, you find the like things, make them their own. The like things, make them their own. The things in this case are the men and the women. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, any questions about that? I'm not gonna go and calculate it. You guys can do it yourself. All right, let's take a look at this. And we have another situation of just like the men and women that we saw. The Senate in a certain state is comprised of 57 Republicans, 42 Democrats, and one Independent. You can already see that this playing out, right? Instead of men and women, we now have Republicans. Democrats and independents. How many committees can be formed if each committee must have three Republicans and two Democrats? Well, first and foremost, permutations or combinations? Combinations, combinations order doesn't matter. We have Republicans, we have Democrats. Did they ask you to select any independents? Mm -hmm. So you only have two, right? If there were independents, we would have another one, right? And actually, it doesn't even matter because you have one independent. Okay, so let's do the Republicans first. Tell me the setup. You got it. 57 C3, we're take, we've got 57 Republicans, we're taking three at a time. Got it? All right, how about the Democrats? 42 C2, there you go. Whatever the result is, you will... We always multiply. Always multiply. Always. So those problems where you saw division, just the calculations, like I said, they're just calculations. Okay? That's a great question, though. All right, let's take a look at this one. Remember, always, always, always ask, P or C, in a race in which 12 automobiles are entered and there are no ties, done. You should know immediately what we're doing. What is it? Permutations. It's permutations. Remember, you have finishers, right? 
You gotta be first, second, third. There are no ties, no repetition. So this one is permutations. First, see, not only is it no ties, but they, they double do it by say first three, meaning that we have ranking. Make sense? So that's how you know, what's the problem? 12 P what? Three, that's it. Okay, everybody got that? I'm not gonna do it because now you have your button, okay? So let's move along. A health inspector must, ins must visit four of 10 restaurants on Monday. And how many ways can she pick the four restaurants? P or C? This one's C. This one is C because there's no ranking of the restaurants. There's, there's no specific way. So this one is C, okay? Next. How many different four letter words can be formed from the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, and G if no repetition? Boom, done. What is it? P, right? Now, Tell me the numbers because this one, we know it's P because no repetition is allowed. Tell me what N is. Seven. Yes, it's not four, right? Four is what you're making and taking from it, right? This is where you get your N. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, very, very good. Nicely done. Okay, let's take a look at this next one. Using 15 flavors of ice cream, how many cones with three different flavors can you create if it is important to you which flavor goes on top, middle, bottom? Mm -hmm. It is P, good job guys. It has to be because top, middle, bottom ranking. Now, the other way that you could have done it if they had, let's say they had taken this out and you didn't see it, it's still a permutation because you're making a cone. Can you put like all of them around? No, it's gotta be top, middle, bottom. Does that make sense, guys? Now, if it was a bowl, you might be able to, it could be combinations. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, so just throwing that out there that you wanna be very careful to read that. This is indeed a permutations. Uh, what is it, 15P3, right, everybody? Okay. An ice cream store sells two drinks in four sizes and six flavors. In how many ways can a customer order a drink? Yes! This is not permutations, it's not combinations, it takes you all the way back to what? Fundamental counting principle, right? This is section 11.1, don't get thrown off. Two options here, four options here, six options here, your answer is just the product of them. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. A health, hey, here's another one, same one, not doing it. Okay, let's make this one your last one and we'll make 22, whatever your bonus, okay? So how many different committees can be formed from seven teachers and 44 students if the committees consist of four teachers and two students? Let's do it. You got it? So there's the teachers, right everybody? 44 C2. 44 C2, and here's the students, right? So this is a men, women, Republican, Democrat, teacher, student problem, right? There's two groups, um, and if there were more groups, you could do that too. But anyways, you gotta just make sure you group the right yeah. like ones together. This is the committee of six members, can you select it? Does that matter? It is, because think of it. Four plus two, there's okay. your six committee. Does that make sense? Yeah. But don't get thrown off by that. Easy to get, miss. But I'm glad you asked it. Does that make sense, everybody? And there's 11-3, done. All right. 